Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Brent Tickenese with this week's SPTV News Update. Starting off, protests in Columbia have continued for over a week now after a tax bill was proposed. The proposed bill would apply sales tax to more products, eliminate exemptions in that place that would increase the cost of basic goods and services, and lower the threshold at which salaries could be taxed to 2.6 million pesos, or about 584 U.S. dollars. These changes would hit Colombia's middle and lower class members particularly hard, especially in the wake of the pandemic, which has already caused three and a half million people to drop below the poverty line in 2020. In response, many middle class people joined in the protests that were organized by Colombia trade unions. Colombia's, pre Colombia's president Ivan Duque announced we would withdraw the bill on Sunday. But the protests still continue, including new violent outbursts against police, as police are believed to be killed, have killed 11 people over the course of the protests. At least 25 immediate response police posts were attacked during the night, including one set on fire with officers still inside. There have also been reports of police being shot at and attacked with knives. As of Wednesday, 24 total people have been killed during the protests, including one officer and over 800 injured. A worldwide police sting has managed to arrest four of the gang members behind one of the world's largest child abuse image sites. Regional and federal German police raided seven addresses across Germany in April and arrested three men accused of operating Boys Town, a platform for disturbing and decent images of videos of children. Another arrest took place in Paraguay. The suspects were also accused of sending instructions to other Boys Town members for secure browsing in order to minimize, minimize risk of discovery by law enforcement. The site was hosted on the dark web, but has been shut down after the arrest. This is the latest case in a sting of global attempts to shut down child image distribution. And more raids and arrests could follow in the future to shut down similar sites. Another shooting in Wisconsin took place this Saturday, this time at a casino restaurant. 62-year-old Bruce Poffel shot two waitstaff at the Duck Creek Kitchen and Bar in Green Bay on Saturday, killing them. Poffel then went outside and shot another resident employee, Daniel Mulligan, before police arrived and opened fire, killing Poffel. Mulligan was brought to a Milwaukee hospital where he is currently in stable condition. Police have stated on the attack that the restaurant was targeted, citing his recent employment there. According to Poffel's former supervisor, Elizabeth Walker, Poffel had been fired from the restaurant for a, quote, a few things including harassment, unquote. After being fired, Poffel had been threatening Walker and her family online and took out a restraining order against him in March. The case is still under investigation as police are looking into Poffel's relationships with his former co-workers. In local news, Wisconsin Representative Katrina Shanklin met with Portage County environmental experts on key items on the upcoming state budget. The budget currently has $91 billion for road care, environmental management, criminal justice, and other facets of local government. UWSP's Chancellor Thomas Gibson was in attendance in addition to other local leaders. This discussion was held to give state leaders insight about how the state budget affects local communities, maintaining natural resources, reducing PFA usage, and other environmental concerns. Where the main subject of the talks, the voting for the budget began this week and plans should be finalized soon. And that's all the news we have for you at SBTV. This will be our last newscast for the semester. But before we go, we want to give a special thanks to our senior staff members who will be leaving the staff at the end of the semester. A huge thank you to our creation coordinator, Riley Wadzinski, our promotions coordinator, Kevin Kornowski, and our production manager, Nathan Wagner. We'd also like to give a special shout out to our former production manager, Claude Neve, who is also graduating this spring. Sam Davison, our former news producer who will now be studying at UW-Madison. Jackson, Jackson Jur Jurek, our former sports producer. And Colin Hawkins, our former business director. All of you have put in some amazing work this past year at SBTV. And we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. We'll be back with more news content in the fall. So until next time, Stevens Point, stay safe and have a great night.